Good morning and welcome to this week's Thought for the Week. It's snowing outside as I record this, and I'm imagining each snowflake as a little piece of God's love floating down to earth. Can you catch one? Can we get a glimpse of how much God loves us this morning? One of the most beautiful and remarkable books ever written in our language and possibly the first book ever written by a woman is The Revelations of Divine Love by Julian of Norwich. We know little of her life other than that she was an anchoress living in her cell, bricked in from the outside world. A little room by the side of St Julian's Church in Norwich. And if you want to see an anchoress's cell, then you only need to go to the parish church in Shear. We know that one day, late in her life, in 1373, she began to have what she called her showings of God's loving purposes. Divine revelations which she reflected on for many years before making them the substance of her book. For someone who had no knowledge of Latin, the ecclesiastical knowledge of language of the day, she had an astounding knowledge of New Testament theology. She writes so simply but with great depth of God's enfolding love. And she says, God is our clothing. In his love he wraps and folds us. Wouldst thou know our Lord's meaning? Love was his meaning. And she goes on to write of God's incomprehensible love. It is God's will that I should see myself as bound to him in love, as if all that he had done, he has done for me alone. And so should every soul think inwardly of its lover. And the final snippet I'm going to give you this morning could have been from the book of Revelation. My mind was lifted up to heaven, and I saw my Lord as Lord in his own home, where he had called his much-loved friends and servants to a banquet. I saw that the Lord did not sit in one place, but ranged throughout the house, filling it with joy and gladness. His beautiful face was radiating measureless love like a marvellous symphony. And it was that wonderful face shining with the beauty of God that filled the heavenly place with joy and light. My friends, when we meet Jesus, we shall be greeted by the most amazing and overwhelming smile of love. In the meantime, maybe we need to lock ourselves away in God's presence to truly appreciate his love for us. Why are we often so reluctant to spend time in God's company, focusing on his love for us than trying to force our own agenda on him in our busyness? Why are we reluctant to be still? What better opportunity can we have to be still in God's presence as during lockdown? Although I appreciate it can be a real challenge for many working from home and maybe with having to home educate children as well. But just try to find that space. The Bible is the story of God's love. It throbs through every page. And this morning I just want us to bask in one or two passages that tells of God's amazing love. There'll be no readings coming up on the screen this morning, but you might like to take a note of those that I will be reading so that you can reflect and meditate on them later. They're from varying translations, but the chapter and verse will appear on the screen at the end. 
That story of love starts with creation, and that itself was an outpouring of God's creative love. And shortly after, we read of God coming down to his created world to walk with Adam and Eve. He actually sought their company. The psalmist picks this up on several occasions, and one example is, I praise you because your works are wondrously made. Let each of us in a moment of quiet put ourselves into that spot where we sense God's creation most wondrously and give thanks in our hearts for the beauty that surrounds us. There are some wonderful passages in Isaiah that tell of God's love for us. Look at these words. Hear them as though they were spoken personally to you. And I'll be reading Isaiah 43, verses 1 to 3. But now this is what the Lord says, He who created you, He who formed you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. You are precious and honoured in my sight. And I love you. I love you. Whatever life may bring, by way of crisis or change, God's love will come to us and reach out to us, touch us and draw us to himself, protecting us. Later you might want to meditate on that passage for a moment. For God is saying that you are precious and honoured in his sight. How does that make you feel? God's love is everlasting. It goes on and on and on. Listen to these words from Isaiah 46, verses 3 to 4, and Jeremiah 31. Listen to me. You might want to insert your own name here. Listen to me, you whom I have upheld since you were conceived and have carried since your birth, even to your old age and grey hairs. I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you, and will carry you, and will sustain you, and I will rescue you. And Jeremiah, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you, with loving kindness. In so many places in the Old Testament, the feminine side of God's personality comes to the fore. Let these words from Hosea soak into you. The Lord says, When you were a child, I loved you and I called you. I myself taught you to walk. I took you in my arms, yet you did not understand that I was the one looking after you. I led you with reins of kindness, with leading strings of love. I was like someone who lifts an infant close to his cheek, stooping down to you. I gave you your food. God loves you so much. Imagine being lifted to his cheek. God just can't stop loving us, even though we fail him and turn our backs on him. 
Hear what the psalmist says in Psalm 103. O my soul, bless God. From head to toe I'll bless his holy name. O my soul, bless God. Don't forget a single blessing. He forgives your sins, every one. He heals your diseases, every one. He crowns you with love and mercy, a paradise crown. He wraps you in goodness, beauty eternal. He renews your youth. You're always young in his presence. God is sheer mercy and grace, not easily angered. He's rich in love. He doesn't endlessly nag and scold, nor hold grudges forever. In a moment of quiet later, maybe think of where you need God's forgiveness and bask in that promise that through his love he forgives. And finally, cast your eyes on the cross. See Jesus nailed to it, with the arms outstretched as to embrace all the wounded and weak of the world, of which we are but a few. John Powell, in his book Unconditional Love, writes, Every cross should have underneath it the words, This is what it means when I love you. Focus on the cross and give thanks to Jesus. I haven't looked at love this morning solely to make us feel good, but really for three reasons. Love inspires love. The more we feel God's love, the more he will draw from us a response of love and the deep down desire to serve him and others. Secondly, love is creative. If we soak up God's love, we lose the absorption with ourselves and can then begin to reflect that love to others. And thirdly, love transforms. It is only being touched by and with God's love that we will begin the process of being transformed into the likeness of Christ. Love comes from God. Look into his face. Let the smile of his love permeate into our whole beings. And let me end with this prayer by Cardinal Newman. Dear Jesus, help me to spread your fragrance everywhere I go. Flood my soul with your spirit and life. Penetrate and possess my whole being so utterly that my life may be a radiance of yours. Shine through me and be so in me that every soul I come in contact with may feel your presence in my soul. Let them look up and see no longer me, but only Jesus. Amen. Enjoy the rest of the week. Stay warm and wrapped up because I think this cold weather is going to continue at least until the weekend. Thank you for listening.